Now then crew, welcome to the Andy Mechanic YouTube channel and if you're returning, welcome back. Okay, we've got tool girl Sam on board today and we're going to be pulling apart a Mazda rear-wheel drive gearbox. And the gearbox is here on this trolley and it may fall at any second because it's a little bit precarious. Yeah, Sam, you can steer the trolley. We'll bring it around a little bit. There we go, look. So it's one of these. Uh, unfortunately, I have no idea of the history of this gearbox. However, this autopsy, we pull it apart, is, uh, is going to hopefully give us some indication of how abused this gearbox really is and if there's anything wrong with it, because the person that gave me it has no idea of the history. So the only one, way, only one way to find out is to pull it apart. And Sam, being our gearbox strip expert, was drafted in to give me a hand to do this. So are you ready, Sam? Yeah. Always. We're going to use that rattle gun, and oh, drum, pull things like apart, and the bolts flying around the workshop. And it's, oh, it's never going to go back together, by the way. So I don't, I'm not too worried about categorising the parts. We'll just talk about them as they come out, um, and it should give you a basic idea of how a rear-wheel drive manual gearbox really works. Okay, crew, here we go. Let's do this. Okay, <clears throat> right. So I think. And I haven't got a manual with this, so we're just, we're just blagging our way through. I think the first job is to remove this tunnel at the end here. And to do that, we've got to remove this gear selection bit. That's where the, where the sort of round ball of the gear lever goes in, into there. And that, that basically allows you to move the selector rods around. So to get that out, it looks like it's going to be a 10 mil spanner. So you grab a 10 mil spanner out of the, out of the box and give that a go. Cool, so uh, the, the ring, ring end first, because it could be quite tight. Flip it round the other way. That's it, the other one, I am, almost. Because oh. <laughs> it's got a slight angle on it, you see, yeah. just to so it can catch on. So pop that on there and then give it a, give it a tap that way. Oh my god, ow, my hand just cramped Already? Oh no. Yeah. Okay. That's it, so give it, just give it a thump to your palm if it's too tight and don't trap your fingers. Is it really tight? Okay, I'll give you a hand if I don't hurt yourself. All right, you ready? There you go. Right, you can finish it off. It's probably got thread lock on it, actually, by the feel of it. It's quite stiff, isn't it? So we need to wind that all the way out. Unfortunately, you can't get a rattle gun in there. It's a <laughs> manual process. How's it looking? Looser. <laughs> Slowly but surely. I wonder if Ben's got a ratchet, ratchet spanner, hang on. Thank you, right, so it should be that way around. So try that one. But given the circumstance, that might be a bit easier to work. There you go. Way better. Way better, isn't it? Tools for tool jobs. I think it's loose. It's pretty, yeah. pretty slack now. Cool, so see if you can get your finger in there and just wind it out. Or is it too tight for fingers? Be right, careful <clears> you don't come too far out and get your spanner trapped. You might have to use the, the open end of the spanner. It's like surgery, isn't it? <laughs> Am I able to get it out? Oh, oh, is it? Like the screw looks like it's a bit... It does, doesn't it? It's, it's, it's already... Long. Yeah, it's, it's out, but it's not what come all the way out. Okay, well, let's see if we can... Cause it's going to have to come out because that, that selector rod stays with the gearbox. We need it out. So I wonder if we. Uh, I know how to do it. I wonder if we put it. If we push that down. There we ah, go. Cool. Ping. It's down. Right. Super. And now that should come off. Brilliant. So that's another part. So you can put that bolt with that if you want. And the washer has eluded us. Washer is. There we go. Look. Huh. One washer. You got it. Uh. Right. Okay. And. I think we can then also pull these two bits off. Now, you can probably, probably use your windy gun on those. So that'd be a 12. See if you've got a 12 mil socket in there. I'll get rid of some of the, yeah, some of the grime. Yeah, well, it never got washed. It was just sat in some of these garden. And I said, hey, do you want a gearbox? You can take a gearbox apart. Okay, sounds good. Right, so yeah, square bit on that end. 
It has been a while, hasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> it's still tight, isn't it? Yeah, you hold on to that, boys. Okay. Get to get our shirts dirty now. Okay, now it wants to be on rewind, so that's that one. There you go. So if I whizzle that round there. There you go. Hang on, did you get the right size ratchet? Let's look at, sorry. 12? 13, oh, what do you like? There is no 12 then, because it's oh, 11. Oh, is there? Oh, next to it's 11. Damn, well, that should go dangerous then. Hang on. 12, use one of these. There you go, like that. No wonder it didn't work. Mmm, it's spun, isn't it? That's scary. <coughs> That's one. Here we go. Fantastic. So those should now just tap out. Okay. And these are like a limiter to stop that that from moving too far. Brilliant. Okay. All right. Now for the fun stuff. So we flip it up on end and. I think first job is to get rid of this. You, any ideas what that could be? It's some kind of switch. What, what? The ignition? No, that's on the dashboard. Come on. Uh, what do you reckon it could be? The fuel? Gearbox. What happens inside a gearbox? It changes gear. Yeah, so if you put a, um, put the vehicle into a certain gear, is there a particular light that comes on the back of the car? Reverse. Right, so it's a reverse. Ooh. It's a reverse light switch. I haven't got a spider light side, so I have to just use one of these, right? Well, it won't be tight anyway. He says with complete confidence. Oh, there we go. Right, so you can spin that out. Just from your fingers, it's just loose. There we go. Peculiar, free washer. And basically what happens is when it when it goes into reverse, it, there's a little tab inside and we'll find it and it'll just push that ball in there. Mm. And there's a switch and it'll connect those two wires together and it'll make your reverse lights come off on the car. Pretty good. Modern cars, obviously the ECU, the, the computer would need to know as well that you're in reverse, so that would also tell the computer. Yeah. Yeah. Right. So now we need to buzz all of these out. Now you're probably going to need an extension bar because it's going to be a bit tight for the ratchet to get in there. But you can probably do these, do these bottom ones if you want. There you go. <coughs> Maybe leave that one. See if you get on that one. Yeah. <coughs> Way easy. Right. <coughs> That's one. Look how shiny that is. Really it's brilliant. Screw. Okay, keep it going. There you go. <coughs> And that Shall one? I move around? Yeah, you can do. Yeah, you should be right. <laughs> wow. I'll just replace it around a bit for you. Get yeah, the next one? Uh, no? Extension bar then. Let's see if that's going to work. It might be long enough. If not, I've got a longer one. There you go. Are my arms long enough? <laughs> <laughs> Way! Okay. Can you get in there? It. <laughs> yes. oh, no. Brilliant. Right. Can you get into that one? Yeah. You're on a roll. <laughs> Any more? One more. One more. Let's go. Put a middle attempt to it. There you go. Right. Yes, just for the wine. Okay, so I think that's all, isn't it? By the looks of it. Right, so now we need a magic hammer. Magic hammer required. Okay, so what I want you to do is to beat this, please. And if you use that end first, that might be enough. And what we're trying to do is to break this seal. Yeah. And there's a couple of dowels down here, so it's going to be, it's going to be pretty tight. So you have to be quite aggressive. Can we see an aggressive sound? 
in your hand there. So if you whack around this, so this is pretty strong here. Leather. Yeah, give it there or further up if you want, you get more of a... Jesus, okay. I don't want to hit you, man. <laughs> Well, I think you're still in shot at that, right. Oh yeah, look at that, okay. But now if you do the other side, but yeah. rather than just hit Make sure that across, try and hit up a little bit as well, that will help to bring it off. I think we're there. Yeah. Oh, it's so. a little bit more. The side that's all cobwebbed up is all making it difficult. All right, so we'll give it a little, a little lever with the flat screwdriver. Just to see if we can move it out. Yeah, it's just, yeah, yeah. Tight around there. Yeah, it's still oh. I think it's just the glue. It's this the sealant, maybe. It actually is a little Yeah, well, it's, it's probably never been a part of this gearbox, so. There we go. Oh, no, no. We get a free bit. You got it? Yeah. Fantastic. Okay, so that's the tunnel out of the way, and that uh, that little that little thing there look, is to channel. It catches the oil spraying off the gears, and it runs down the back, and it'll see it goes down there. Look, it's down there. It actually lubricates the rear bearing. Pretty cool. I know Land Rover years ago on the old Mark One Discoveries they had a problem with their with their gearbox, and they pretty much forgot to put one of those in. <laughs> kept seizing up. Okay, so we've got here, where's that bar that came out? Right, that is the bit that had the gear lever attached on there, on the ball. So basically this little one is just a link rod that connects into these three selector rods here. And we'll see what those three selector rods do once we get the main gearbox taken apart. Right, so the next job, I think, is going to be to pop out the roll pins on each of these sort of end pieces for the selector rods. So we'll go and find a punch and get the hammer out. And I think we're also going to have to, by the looks of this, oh that's loose. Oh, there's fault number one. See that outer race is loose in the casing. Look, it shouldn't spin like that. It should only be inner that spins. So we found a problem with the, with the gearbox already. So we've got a, a snap ring to remove there. And I think that the, the lay shaft will just pull straight through the casting. I don't think we need to undo that nut. But I could be wrong. Oh, it's full of gears. Awesome. Okay, so we need a punch. Let's find a punch. I think this will be the right size, yeah. So can you see there, look, there's a little, what we call a roll pin. It's in there, there's, there's three of them. So we need to pop that on there and just tap it all the way through. Maybe if you do this one first, actually, that, that one's going to hit the other one, isn't it? So we do that one at this end first. Do it as. Might have to give it more of a whack. I think it's really hitting. Is it being stubborn? Yeah. It's been in there a long time. So I'll give you some of me try and start one for you. See if it's gonna work. It might, it might not. Yeah, there you go. Alright, so be aggressive. No, we're well, still going, yeah. That was something else falling in the air. Oh. Uh, you're about 10%. You're about <laughs> Give it a good whack. There you go. Yeah. All right, I better take over. <laughs> it could be a roll, then. That was a better technique. Yeah, okay, you hold, you hold the gearbox for me, then. All right. Because it might end up going across the bench. So you're going to catch the pin. Bloody good. Right, that's one. And that should come off there. There we are. Number two. Right, you catch 
Open. Perfect. Get that one out of the way. Pretty tight. Okay, that's one. Ta-da! They were really tight. A lot tighter than normally are. Yeah. Okay. Ooh, that one's got a little spring-loaded bit here, so that tells us that's a reverse. Because you know when you put your car in reverse, you've got to push that bit harder? Yeah, yeah. To get the, it's like a, a safety thing, so... Yeah, it's like a like this. Mmm! So hopefully you don't put it in reverse. I don't know what that means, but it yeah, does that. Yeah, it has an extra bit of loading yeah. on it. It's like, oh, okay. Right, so next job is we've got a snap ring to remove, which is that one just here. So we need some um, circuit pliers. Let's have a look. Did you just right. lift it? So you're in charge. There you go. Right, Sam. So can you see here, look, we've got a little, like a, almost like a washer, but it's got a, a little yeah. chunk missing. If you can get those teeth, the two little prongs in the gap, it requires a bit of accuracy. That's it. And then use it as a normal pair of pliers so you can, you can bring those two together. And it should splay that snap ring. There we go. Let's see if we can get it over the other side of the camera. Oh, nearly. And again. Try, try and hold the pliers with one hand if you can, because then you can, you can squeeze them together. There you go, that's it. And again. Perfect. There we go. Right, you should be able to release now a bit. Got to wiggle it off with the with the screwdriver. On the on the spot there, weren't you? Felt really sick, like out Did of you? nowhere. <laughs> I was like concentrating so there hard, my body was like, ow. Right, we've got another one. Oh, there's one here to do as well. Look, this is the uh, this is the speedo drive pickup. So if we turn that around, we can see it on camera. There we go. You ready to go again? Deep breaths. All right. I can't so see. This one's got like two little holes, oh, yeah. so it's maybe a bit easier to keep it in place. All right, squeeze it together. Oh, look at that, you're on it. Okay, you let go now. Because oh. <laughs> it might go flying. It might hit us in the eyes or something. Yeah, not ideal. No, not really. We only ever do it once. Uh, oh, there you go. One circlip. That'll go in my circlip box. I always wondered what those were, like how how you put them on and take them off because they got that gap so I just always mm. didn't know. It's not it's not always easy to be honest. Um, right now can you see here look we've got like a little ball bearing pushed into the shaft. <coughs> mm -hmm. Well that is to locate this drive so that it doesn't spin on the shaft like a keyway. Yeah? Yep. Right uh, so that ball bearing might have to come out as well so if he just passes the magnet that might be enough just to pull it out see if you can See if you can get that ball bearing out of the hole. <laughs> Just to get it to <laughs> Telescopic. Okay, so that's how that works. Alright, so it might, it might be enough just to suck that magnet out of there, out of that ball bearing. There we are, look. Cool. Almost. There you go. Tiny. Genius. It's about as big as my lip thing. Just a bit bigger. There we go. That's the other one. We can get rid of that. Get rid of that. And now we can slide that one out of the way, hopefully. Really? Right, that's that one. Jeez, I've got some washers. Okay, and what else have we got? Another spacer. And it looks like some kind of split spacer, but I think that can now stay in. I think it can. I think what will happen when we split this next bit off, that shaft should go down and this cover will lift up. It's not always the case. Sometimes, you know, gearboxes are built differently and you just got to, well, go with the flow. But we saw that bearing spinning, didn't we? So it's, we know it's loose in the casing, so there's no reason why it shouldn't. Okay, so now we've got to find... We've undone all those bolts, haven't we? And I think they were long enough to go all the way through, which means now 
that if we get our hammer, our magic hammer again, and give this another tap, this should then break free on that sealant and we should be able to lift the next, the next stage away. I'm going to get you to, to hit the casing around this top bit here. You won't cause any harm, don't worry. Spin it around. Same again. Just see if you can um, you can use that end if you want. It's a bit harder. And see if you can hit upwards slightly. Same again. Just see if we're not missing any bolts. You, you enjoying your workout? Getting into it. No need for the gym today, yo. Never. Never, no, me neither. Yeah. I, I haven't used the gym for years. It's terrible. It's pretty well glued shut, isn't it? Mm. It should come off. Yeah, I saw it move a little bit. It's just okay, it's not have, quite strong. Let's have a little, a little whack. See if I can encourage it. Oh, there we are. You're right, it was moving. There we go. Ah. Okay, so we'll just wiggle that off. Mm. Brilliant, okay. So, any shrapnel in there? No, yeah. everything looks pretty good. However, we have some gears. So what have we got? Well, if you see here, look, we've got, you see these straight cut gears? Well, straight away, that tells me that that's reverse. Because you know when you reverse your car, it goes, on a manual, it goes, it makes a different noise yeah. to the gears that go <laughs> forward. And that's because it's got these, um, these straight cut gears. Now at the moment they're all in mesh, which is oh, it's all right. Oh, look at that! It's a, it's got synchro on reverse. That's posh. Because some gearboxes, because you can see we've got we've got three gears. What m most older rear-wheel drive gearboxes do is all they do is they slide the middle gear into mesh and out of mesh, more like a little arm. Whereas this one has actually got a synchro for reverse gear. That's really posh for 20 years ago, and that's probably how old this gearbox is. Okay, so what's going to be next? Well, we've got to dig our way in, so we've got to clear all this stuff off here, I think. Unless, there is a chance that some gearboxes, all the gears are mounted on a centre plate. I know the Skylines and stuff like that. And this is the centre plate. So there is a chance we might be able to not have to take anything off, and just loosen that next plate and then the whole gearbox, the internal of the gearbox, will come out away from this other ca casting and then we can mount it in the vise and we can go through the gears we can see what gears what. That will be cool. So maybe we need to start hammering again. We've got, where's that wire brush gone? It's not much of a wire brush anymore. Okay, if we just give that a bit of a clean. To see the join, won't we? There's the join up there. Don't think there's any more bolts holding the whole thing together. I think they're all just bolts that hold the plates in place. Okay, it's like a, it's like being a, a, a theatre, isn't it? Taking a body apart. Never quite know. Where's my big punch? What happens is they get stuck on the dowels. That's a dowel. See there, look. These dowels tend to rust over time, and they, even though the bolts are out, they're still stuck on the dowels. Okay, so we go. Hmm. No, it seems pretty solid, doesn't it? Okay, let's see if we've got any bolts down inside the bell housing. Yeah. Mm, oh, I'm, I'm pleased you brought that up actually, because <laughs> those are our detent springs. Now, I, I don't want to take them out at the moment, because... Oh, that's a little bit. It is. Yeah, gearbox is trying to get really dirty outside. So the detent springs, and it may also have a, an interlock system in there as well. What they do is, you know when you, when you put the car into gear, it sort of goes click. And it's very difficult to 
I've already moved the gear lever half the distance. It's either in neutral or it's all the way in, isn't it? And it's the job of those detent springs. And can you see the other one here? Look, you see the groove in the shaft? So what happens is inside that tube, there's a ball bearing, and that ball and there's a spring, and that ball bearing is pushed into that groove. And when we move the shaft, the gear lever, it pushes the ball bearing back against the spring to jump to the next groove. And that's what locates the shaft. It's either in one position or the other position. It can't be in the middle somewhere. Because if it was in the middle somewhere, you'd be half in gear and it would cause the teeth to grate and stuff. Okay, well we'll, cut, we'll we'll take those apart later on. I just want to try and get this gearbox split in one lump, if I can. So maybe there are some bolts through the bell housing. I, I really don't know, so we'll have a little look. Without a manual, it's, it's always a bit of fun trying to work things out. Okay, well there are some bolts in there, and they're twelves. So if we grab the airline again, with the right things. Mm, hopefully, right. I'll put that on there for you. And I'll spin the gearbox around so the people can see what we're doing. And you can tell this gearbox has been in the garden because it's full of water. Okay, so you've got a series of bolts. So a bit buzz those out. <coughs> Zoom. Okay. <coughs> Jeez, woman, what? you're so dangerous. Maybe we should turn it down a bit. Does it do turn down on the on reverse? It should do. Well, you you were on the small on the on the slowest anyway. Oh. That's how dangerous you are. Okay. <coughs> wow. It's so bloody dirty. Yeah. <coughs> Whoa. <laughs> Good catch. How many more? Two more. I'm gonna stand clear. <coughs> with, with the with the button on the tool, you know, you can actually. It's it's variable. You don't have to. Do it. There you go. That's more like it. Okay. All right. So we've got some more bits to get rid of. And magic hammer. We should be able to give that a bit of a tap now. And then that bit can come off. Okay. So it's got a shim. So we don't lose the shim. We'll stick the shim back in there because that will that will adjust the the float, the end float on that shaft, maybe, or on that shaft because it's on the bottom one. Hmm. Oh, that's that's gearbox oil. Uh, EP eighty yeah. ninety. Nice. <laughs> okay. All right. What? Yeah. Andy's mistake. So you see that snap ring there? Look. Mm. We're gonna have to remove that because oh we're trying God. to. You know what it smells? It's terrible. Dear, oh dear. Okay. So we need to remove that snap ring. Who would want to do that mechanic really? You got again. Tell me. You in? Yeah. Yeah. Bloody excellent. That should that should be enough, I think. You take the screwdriver out now. Maybe it's stuck. It's stuck. There we go. Who needs the right tools? Okay. So remove the snap ring. And so I'm hoping that all of that lot now, if we give that a tap, it should help to unseat that plate. Because there really are no more bolts in there. No, it's just very stuck. Okay, so use that end and give that shaft a whack. Moving. Okay, let's get this on camera, I think. So, I'll lift that round. There we go. And I'll just get a block of wood to go under there. Should make it a bit easier. Alright, Sam, you can see it's starting to split now. Look, we've got a bit of a gap going on. So, if you, if you flick your hammer around, so you're using the hide end, because it's it just takes some of the shock out of it, so we're not going to damage internal components. And give it some more wax. Oh yeah! There's a cow hide beam. It is, it's a bit of mucam. 
Works really well, though, doesn't it? <laughs> Cheers, Mr. Mukem. Right, if you hold that for us, I'll, I'm going to extract the gearbox. Okay. That's brilliant. Wow. Well, a good design. A lot going on. Yeah, it's like a cassette type gearbox, yeah. isn't it? You can just take the whole thing out. It is, and there's, there's any bits of metal in there? Can you see anything that's broken or fallen off? No, it's just oil moving just, around. Just a bit of oil, isn't it? <sighs> Pretty nice. I love it. You can't get it out of your clothes, though. You get it on your, on your new shirt, and you'll never get it out. You'll <laughs> smell of EP90 for life. Oh, God. Okay. So there's definitely there's water in this gearbox, which is not a good sign. Mm. It's obviously been outside for a while. The guy was really cagey about the history of this gearbox. But I do like it, given the fact we can put the whole thing in the vice now. And oh, we can see what's going on. So if you open the vice for me, I'll put it in there. Okay, and we'll tweak it up. Really good. So much easier to see than um, a transaxle. Yeah. Right, Sam. So the first thing we need to do, because we've we've got rid of the gear lever, we haven't got part of the mechanism available to us. So we need to put all the gears into neutral. And you can see here, look, this one is engaged. Now, I have no idea which is which yet. We're going to talk about that in a minute. So we'll just. See if we can pick that across. Go back. There we go. Right. So that one's in neutral. That one's in neutral. And we've got another set here, which is reverse and fifth. Because on the gear lever, reverse and fifth on the same gate, isn't it? Hopefully, hopefully. Okay, so you should be able to hold that shaft. That's the output shaft that goes to your rear wheels. If you hold that still, and I'll, I'll try and turn the input shaft, and that will tell us we're definitely in neutral. Yeah. Yeah? Is that just drag? It is just drag, isn't it? Yeah, there we go. Look. Oh. Cool. All right. So we're definitely in neutral there. All right. So basically, the way this gearbox works is we've got the drive from the engine coming in. And it, for all gears, except fourth, and I'll come to fourth in a minute, for all gears, the drive goes from this gear here down into the lay shaft, that's what we call the shaft down here, the lay shaft. And then it goes along the lay shaft and then back up through one of these other gears and out to the rear wheels. And the reason why we go through different gear sets is to change the ratio. Because you know when you set off in first, it's quite, it's got good acceleration but it doesn't go very fast. Yep. When you get up to sort of fifth gear, you want to be, be able to go really fast but you compromise acceleration. If you put your foot hard down in fifth when you go really slow, it doesn't really accelerate much, does it? Okay, so <clears throat> we need to find first gear, and first gear would have the smallest gear on the lay shaft and the largest gear on the output shaft, so the lay shaft has to spin a lot more times than the output shaft. And one thing a lot of people don't realise is that this shaft here is separate to that shaft there. And we know that because I can turn it. If it was all one piece of steel, I wouldn't be able to do that. Yeah. Okay. <coughs> really <laughs> Fine, me. okay, so if we want first gear, the drive comes in on the, on the input shaft, and it goes through the drive gear here to the driven gear on the lay shaft, and it runs along the lay shaft, and we've got to find the smallest gear on there. So which one's that, Sam? The smallest gear on the lay shaft, on this bottom shaft here. Smallest one. That one? Yeah. That's that one here for the camera. Yeah, so that's the smallest gear, so that's going to be first gear, that's first gear drive, first gear driven, so we can actually engage that now, manually, by, when you move the gear lever, it would actually pull this selector rod that way, and it would engage the sync rod, because at the moment that gear can, sp can spin freely on that shaft, it's hard to demonstrate, but it, it can spin freely, so we'll engage it, hopefully, there we go, so now we're in first gear on the gear lever, and the drive's coming along here, going down here, going along the lay shaft, and back out and down to the wheels. So now when I turn this, you'll probably see that that shaft's spinning a lot slower than the input shaft. Really quite slow. Okay. 
And then if we want second gear, well, second gear is on the same gate as first in most gearboxes. So this one being the second smallest gear, that must be second gear. All right, so we can push that across now into second gear. And there's usually only a small ratio difference between first and second. So you're probably going to see that this shaft is probably spinning a little bit quicker. But this one still spins faster because we've got a reduction ratio going. Okay, so we'll pop that back into neutral. There we go. And we need third gear. Now, third gear has to be... The next biggest. That one there, doesn't it? The next biggest. Okay, you're on it. So that will be this selector shaft, and it has to go that way to engage the synchro for third. So hopefully it's going to move on to get it go. There we are. Right, so we're in third gear now. So when I turn the input shaft now, we should see that that output shaft is going even quicker. Cool. All right, so we've done first, second, third. Now we've got to go through fourth gear. Fourth gear is completely different on these gearboxes. Fourth gear is one-to-one -one ratio, so all they do is connect the input shaft to the output shaft. And it's done by this synchro hub gear. Because you've gone from third, and now you want to click it down into fourth. All we have to do is move that selector rod this way, and it'll engage fourth, it'll disengage third, and put it into fourth gear. So hopefully I can do that. There we go. The whole thing doesn't fall apart. Right. So now, the drive going through the gearbox is going through this shaft and directly onto that shaft and straight out. So the lay shaft is doing no work at all. So if you've got a really noisy gearbox and it's only noisy in, in first, second, third, but not in fourth or fifth, um, well, not in fourth, then you know it's a lay shaft there and it's most likely failed because that's got load on it in those gears. But in fourth gear, there's no load because it's just going straight through. Okay, so this shaft now, the input shaft and the output shaft are both going exactly the same speed because they're mechanically linked. Direct drive. Okay, but you're telling me you want to go faster, right? Okay, so we want to go into fifth. So if you go to the back of the gearbox, and fifth is traditionally known as an overdrive gear. That's the only one on it. It is. There's fifth hiding there, look. And fifth is controlled by this selector rod. And to engage fifth, all you do is do that. And now, when I turn the input shaft, that shaft actually is spinning faster. faster yeah, yeah we, can, we can prove that with it being an overdrive. If I give that a bit of a clean, and give that a bit of a clean, and we put a, put a paint marker on it. Yellow or white, Sam? White. White. Okay, so I'll put a paint marker at 12 o'clock on that one, and a paint marker at 12 o'clock on that one. Okay, so as I turn this, that one should get back to here before this one. Hopefully, is Andy going to be right? I don't know. There you go, look. So that one's now at 12 o'clock, and this one's about 11 o'clock. So we've got an overdrive ratio going on, and that's what gives us fifth gear, because the output shaft is spinning faster than the input shaft. Mind blowing, isn't it? So much. Yeah. And then I'll just I'm gonna mess with your world now. This shaft spins at the same speed as the crankshaft inside the engine. So if you're if you're showing, I don't know, what's your red line on your car? Eight thousand, seven thousand, six thousand? Tell me where the red line starts? No. Yeah. Okay, let's say it's six thousand. Alright? So the engine, the crankshaft is spinning at six thousand RPM that shaft is spinning faster and that's the prop shaft down to the rear diff so and that's exposed so it's spinning around at maybe six and a half thousand rpm which is incredibly dangerous to be ready to let go it would easily tear a hole through the floor of the car yeah oh pretty cool so make sure your prop shaft's in good nick all right now what other gear does a car have other than first second third fourth and fifth reverse brilliant Okay, so you did. Every time it's in here. Oh, I'm going to be in neutral first. Hang on. There we go. Right, so we're back into neutral. No drive. Because you should always be stopped when you put it in reverse, right? Okay, so we're now stopped. And we're going to put it into reverse. And this is a really posh reverse because it's got synchro. Yeah. Synchro mesh is a, is a mechanical means of equalizing the speed of the gears before they engage. So you don't get a crunch. 
Uh, on, traditionally on a rear wheel, on, a, on the reverse gear, if your car's not completely stopped and you put it in reverse, it normally goes crunch. Yeah. This gearbox <laughs> won't, terrible. it does. This gearbox won't do that. This gearbox will just go, yeah, okay. It's cool. I want that car. Yeah, it's pretty good. <laughs> uh, I'm, like I said, I don't know which car it came out of, but it's pretty good. Okay, so to engage reverse gear, slide that across. And now, before I, that should turn the opposite way, shouldn't it? I am impressed. Whoever made this gear did a great job. There we go. Look. Reverse is always a bit notchy because gearboxes don't like being reverse. There's more gears involved and stuff. And it has to, that's the way that it achieves reverse is it's going through a third gear, you see? There's, a, there's another gear between the lay shaft and the, and the output shaft, and that, that changes the direction of the gearing. So the, the actual drive train, the flow of power, the power flow, call it what you like, through the gearbox, when we're in reverse, it's going through this shaft here, it's going back down this primary production gears here, it's running all the way along the lay shaft to here, it's going through this gear, through the idler gear, and onto the uh, reverse driven gear on the output shaft. God, you've learned so much about a gearbox in the last 10 minutes, haven't you? Yeah. Pretty cool. Thanks for putting it in my waffle. Okay, right, what else do we need to do? Well, we should really, we're going to pull the whole thing apart because it's, it's going to go for scraps. So we've got nothing to lose. But I think the next job is to pull out these detent springs. Now we'll see how they work. Okay, cool. Okay, um, so we're going to need 14. So I think we've done all this, the gears, we've run through the, the, the oh, I've got to stay in my shirt. <laughs> okay, it's a workshop shirt, that's the way it is. So inside here, we've got the, the detent springs. And there may also be an interlock system in there as well. I just don't know. The interlock system may be separate. Now, the detent springs are there to give the feel and location for the, uh, for the driver as regards the gear lever, so it goes clunk, clunk into, into the right places. But also, more importantly, it actually locates the selector shaft exactly where it needs to be to ensure that the gear is fully engaged. So if it's not fully engaged, it, it can actually jump back out of gear and it causes terrible damage to these little tombstone teeth. And we'll see more about that when we pull the gearbox apart more. All right, so we're going to destroy the gearbox further. And that needs to go down, Sam, if you can. Just give it a... Give it a... Come on, 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 and there is a spring in there, so it might go Boing. like a jack-in-the-box across the workshop. Just nice and steady. Oh, there is a spring, but it didn't work. All right, so where's our magnet there? See if you can pull just a spring out with that. And there might be a... <laughs> control your magnet, woman. Okay. Okay, All right, now there will also be a ball bearing down there, which we probably can't get out at the moment. If we've got the tray for all this thing. We're going to lose bits. And somebody might ring me up and say, hey Andy, I need that gearbox for my car. I've been looking for years. Can I have it? I live in Auckland. And if that's the case, then Andy will have to put it back together again. Well, actually, I'll just let you put it back together, Sam. There you go. Yeah, because I'll remember. Yeah, you can watch the video. It's easy. You got it sussed. Okay. Uh, can, you, can you magnetise that spring as well? It's a good little magnet, isn't it? Definitely works. There you go. Oh, that's a lovely spring. What's going on there? They don't, normally, they don't normally change. Okay, I think there's one more here, look. Which does this shaft, which is first, second. So that's first, second lay shaft, second, third, not lay shaft, first, second selector rod, <coughs> second, uh, third, fourth selector rod, and fifth and reverse selector rod. I haven't pulled the gearbox apart for ages. So cool. Ben gets upset because he sees me wasting the gearboxes. It was good till you got your hands on it dead. Right, he's right. Okay, so the next job, because we can't just pull that off because we've got the, um, the fingers, the selector itself, actually around the, um, the synchromesh unit. 
the hub. So we've got some more roll pins to knock out. Now you like roll pins, don't you? They're your favourite thing. Could you pass me the hammer, Sam? Wait, which one? Oh, the normal one, I think. Yeah. I, I just If you use the magic hammer too much, you use up all the magic. Yeah. And we have to kill unicorns to get the blood to fix it. So you're a fan of unicorns, right? Yeah. Yeah. I, I just like to drink the blood. Okay. Um, not really. This is really hard for me. Can you catch that sound? Ta-da! Okay, that's that one. You got it? One from earlier. Oh, mint! Because I'm going to save those. Okay, so now we should be able to remove this, this selector shaft altogether now. And there is going to be a... I'll arm you with a magnet, because there is going to be a ball bearing disappear. I can see it down the hole. Maybe it's going to come this way. They're quite well machined, these things, so you've got to just jiggle them around a bit to, to get them to work. So a ball bearing is going to appear just down there. I need your ultimate reactions to catch it. Are you ready? Oh, don't move. Oh shit, there we go. Right. Don't move. Don't move. We can do this. I need the infamous flat screwdriver. Right, it's coming your way. Ta-da! What a team! Wow. Ball bearing. Okay. So this is the selector fingers, and that goes on there like that. And basically, as you saw, it connects the selector rod, and with that roll pin, it moves it side to side. All right? Happy with that? We can bin that now. Yeah. What we'll do is we'll put that with the shaft, because usually these are these are all different, and they, they only work. If you put them in the wrong places, the gearbox is never yeah. going to work. All right, so we'll stick that there. <sighs> Another roll pin. So, time to die again. Come in your way. You got it? Yeah. So good. Okay, so same again. We should have. of metal. I mean, it was made in the factory. Probably. Ta da! Right. That's that one. And you got your magnet? Yep. Okay, here we go. You can see the ball bearing now. See it down there? Ball ball. Oh. Okay. Now maybe it will, maybe it will drop out and do what? Oh, <laughs> no, where did it go? There you go. Clink. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, we'll stick that one back on there. Man, that's a really tight fit on that one. Okay, we've got one left, which is, remember which gear this one does? Five. And reverse. Reverse, yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Oh. So good. So we can now, hopefully, push that out. Oh, I can see, I can see the, um, here, I'll, I'll get the, I need to move the camera. Here you go, Sam. Right. Can you see in there, there's some more 
ball bearings just hiding just down there look between the actual um, shafts where the shafts go and what they are can you see down there put the yeah. screws over this side are they stuck or are they meant to be uh, they're probably going to push through so yeah. those are what we call the interlock coming your way yeah. Now, sometimes they're a ball bearing, and sometimes they're like a little lozenge, lozenge like a tic tac. I can't do it anymore. <laughs> I need a pair of long nose pliers. Hang on. Yeah, see if you can go in from that side and, and grab it with that while I film you doing it. This side? Uh, from, from the far side, yeah. Can I see So you can see down there, look, a little lozenge. Oh, look at that. Almost. No, no, no. Put the pliers either side of it. Can you see? Oh, I just oh pushed you it pushed back. it back! <laughs> All right, I got it again. I got it. There you go. How's that? Look at the camera on, on here. You'll see it. It's like surgery. Oh my god! It's not easy. If I had a bendy screwdriver, I could push it uh. through for you. I can't push it through anymore. What that does is it basically prevents two shafts from moving at once, and that's called the interlock system. It's very important that you put these lozenges back, in, <laughs> back, try again, back in again. Otherwise, if your gearbox ends up in two gears at once, it will destroy itself. There's no question. It's so annoying. You can't quite get on with the pliers, can you? So you hold the screwdriver. See if you can hold the screwdriver there. Let's see if I can get in. It might be that the pliers are too big. Uh, it is. It's because the, the pliers. Oh. Are useless. I can't, I can't, I'm a bloke. I can't do two things at once. No, I need smaller pliers. <laughs> I'll set you up to fail there. Hang on. Uh, I think these might just be enough. Let's have a go with these. Man, this is really difficult with a camera. Okay, I can't be bothered. All right, so you can see in there, look, that is the interlock. It will fall out very shortly and end up on the floor. And there's another one just between uh, these two um, shafts as well. So you must remember to put those back in again. Very important. I let go and it popped out. Oh, you're joking. Straight away. As soon as the camera was turned off, it falls out. Ah, my finger was stuck. You got it? But yeah. Oh it's yeah, not, so, it's, so it's, it's not, not a circle. It's not a circle. It's not a ball bearing, is it? It's actually actually what we call a lozenge. Yeah. So you can paint that white and put it in your mate's tic tacs and break your teeth. Oh god. Imagine how much that'd hurt. Biting down on that. Okay, so there's gonna be another one. We can see it just down there. Now, if I had a this it would be pretty pretty cool. I might have found a magnetic screwdriver. I think these little ones are magnetic. You could probably pull it straight out from the top. No, not strong enough. Okay, back to plan A. Right, Sam, there's going to be another lozenge coming your way. <laughs> Over there? That was a ball bearing. Oh, yeah. No, I've got a spring coming my way. Yeah, there is all. a spring. Okay, so we've lost a ball bearing at the moment. Okay, so watch out, people. Oh, there's one. There's a ball bearing, Sam. There's one. You got it? Yes. Cool. Okay. And there is a spring, so we'll try and ease that spring up. So that one actually had a ball bearing on both sides of the shaft, which is pretty cool. All right, can you get that one? Is it strong enough? No. Oh yeah, you got it? Cool. Okay, so we just lost the ball bearing. We'll find that off camera, for sure. Promise. Okay, so we've taken out all the selector rods, we've removed the interlock system, and we've removed the detent system. The detent was the ball bearings, and the interlock system was the lozenges that run between the two shafts, or the three shafts. Okay. Bloody good. Alright, now what you should be able to do is remove the input shaft now without any bother, he says. You should be able to really. On most gearboxes you can. Maybe not, not enough clearance. 
Okay, so we're going to have to strip the whole cluster together, which means we've got to remove that big nut on the back here and basically take the gubbins off the back. Now I think the reverse drive gear, which is this one here, I think that's that should pass through the casing bar. Either that or it'll be splined to the shaft. But we've got to get all of that off before we can then pull everything through. And we've got more parts to take off the back here as well. So we'll flick it around in the vise, and then we can get to that big nut. We use the big windy gun on there, I think. And then we, we can start pulling bits off. Cool, because I won't be happy until we've got a big pile of bits on the bench. Anyway. There you go, you crank it up. That's it, go on, you're going the right way, that's it. There you go, and I'll give it a tweak from this side if you want. That'll do, I'm going to go far, is it? No. Okay, right, we need a big socket to go on there now. Jeez, what size that is? Bigger than that, might be 26. What size is that? 27, that. What size is that one? 32. Yeah, that'll do. Right, there's a big windy gun. Are you ready for a big windy gun? No. This is a two hand job, isn't it? Okay. Rough reverse. Airline. There you go. All right. Prepare yourself. Oh god, this one's so big. It is, it's like twice the weight, isn't it? Right, onto that big nut there. And let's see if we can buzz it off. Okay, whenever you're ready. That's it, go on, keep going. Oh yeah, there we go. One nut. Okay. So the next job now is we've got to get that bearing and that off. So I think we're going to need to use that puller. Remember that big puller we had? Let's go and find that. Okay. So this is now going to pull that bearing and the gear off the shaft for us. That's the plan. Have we used this before? Yeah. Did we haven't we? All the mopping. Let's risk it. Board yet. Mm. Mm. I used to rebuild little Suzuki Jeep transfer boxes and we used to have to use this for that to get the flanges off the diffs and the transfer box and stuff. And it did get a bit monotonous, I must admit. I probably bought this puller 25 years ago. So it's older than me. It's older than you, Sam. Oh, but. <laughs> there goes the YouTube censorship strikes again. <laughs> Right, I think it's stuck. There's a lot of worse things on YouTube, but I don't understand why they care. There really them. is. There really is a lot worse. I think I've literally it. seen some really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they bleep a word. Yeah, it's like. <laughs> like um, some real, real sick stuff that shouldn't be on their their guideline terms, but it stays up there. Right, bearings off. Oh, you know what? Mm -hmm. Catching the bearing at the top. <laughs> okay, so this top bearing here, Sam, is retained by. Oh, dropped another one. <laughs> it's a bit like a circlet, but it's not. It's in two halves, and you just got to pull them apart like that. Okay, so now that bearing should move off that shaft quite easily. Nearly there. <sighs> What's that? Okay, so we lost some bits, didn't we? Yeah. Right, one bearing, which I've destroyed. <laughs> okay. So you can see where our magic hammer comes in so helpful there. Ta-da! Oh. Right, so 
fifth gear drive, fifth gear driven. Get rid of that. Reverse gear drive. What else have we got? That's about it for that one, isn't it? Okay. Oh, a big nut. Look at that. So we'll pop that into mesh for now. Okay, so we're going to have to get that big nut off, and then we should be able to pull the shaft through. Now, the problem is. Yeah, I haven't got a socket that's <laughs> deep enough to go all the way down there, so the only way I can do this is to put a punch on there and actually undo it with a hammer. You know, tap, tap, tap. So I'll give it a go. Put the stain on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Very mounted. So, Sam, could you just try and stop that from turning for us? Is that right? Moving. Oh, I, I meant to do that. Okay. Oh, I was going to find it. Eventually comes together. Slowly. Cool, yeah? Professionals to the end. You remember what my motto is? Always think professional regardless of your actions. <laughs> Works me every time. Right. Okay, so synchro unit coming out. Ooh, right, okay. Sorry. Revelation. You know, I said there was synchro on reverse. There isn't. It's got no curl. So that's, uh, see that curl there, look? Mm. All right, you see on camera or on camera? And you see the little grooves inside there, the bulk ring. Mm. Those little grooves cut through the oil so, they can, so it can grip onto that, onto that curl. And the more it's pushed, the more grip it's got. So if you, if you hold that loosely, it rotates really freely. But when you push it together, it sort of grips. Mm. You feel that, yeah? So that's, that's basically how it synchronizes the speed of the two gears before it puts them into mesh. Otherwise it'd go, you know. So when these things wear out, obviously they can't grip on there anymore because they've got too big in diameter. And your synchro stops working. So the reverse hasn't got the conical clutch part. It's just got the tombstone teeth. So this would actually still crunch when it's reverse. Not as badly as one where it's just the, the, the spur gears going into mesh. But even so, it's still not ideal. Right, so I'll have all of that out of there. It's all sort of reversey stuff. Okay, probably a washer in there as well. Yeah. Hiding, he was. Okay, so now that should come through, and that should come through. Really? Maybe it needs a bit of persuasion. If you just cradle those gears there, Sam, I'll give it a little friendly tap. There you go. Right, lay shaft coming out. And that's all one piece. See all those gears are all machined into that yeah. one piece of steel? Well, I'm glad about that. <laughs> there's so many things turning. Yeah, there's a lot going on with gearboxes. Yep. Especially these little bastard half moon things that I wasn't aware of. Yeah. Well, then. If you think it's a thing, you're going to go about it a completely different way. Yeah, my pain is for the viewers. Yeah. Okay, so there we go, that's, that's the, the output shaft. 
and uh, what have we got? Uh, first gear driven, because that's the what that's the the output part. So first gear driven, third, second. So first, second, third, and that's the input down to the ratio. Easy. It's actually a really good mix. Well, it was until I get it back. Yeah, I've <laughs> yeah, actually destroyed it. Now. Okay. Right. And that's all I've got left. So we've got. Where's your little rattle gun? Just go to your little window and you can buzz these out first. Is that a 12 on there? Yeah. Still a 12? Yeah. Cool. Right. I could probably get rid of the extension of that because you're quite dangerous yeah. with that, aren't you? <laughs> gear for reverse and that's that whacking great cage that caused all those problems yeah. earlier on. <laughs> Bloody good. And I didn't do a bottom that's this this is probably gonna come out. Now. You speak so much louder in your ears are covered. Okay, so that's the idler gear shaft that I've just taken out. So we'll pop that back in there, look. There we are. Everything sounds loud. It does. That. That's a weird bearing. Yeah, it looks like teeth. Yeah. Well, pretty weird looking teeth. Cool. More than those look like teeth. Mmm. And they're called that. <laughs> now we've got one more bearing left. We need to take the bearing. What? Should do, really, because we are stripping Smack the gearbox. It and use it. Use it, why not? Let's cause this. <laughs> oh, there you go. Ta da! Oh, and a shim. It's got a free shim with it as well, look. Pretty cool. So, what size is that one? It's obviously Coyotes. That's the original bearing from you. Japan. Made in Japan, proper bearing. That's why it's still there. 6306 RK BIH. Is this going to say the same or is it? No, it'll be a different one. Different part. Smaller bearings. What have you got on that one? TM305 Dash. Made in Japan. Mm. You can barely see it. Oh, the crap was on it, isn't it? All oh, the fingerprints. Oh, yeah, made in Japan. Oh, NSK bearing. Wow. So that might not be the original bearing because. They've been using, what was this one again? That's a Koyo. So Koyo is normally the OE fitment. Mm. So this gearbox might have been a part before. <laughs> Maybe. Like because that, the, these guys will make that bearing as well. Yeah. It's not specific just to one manufacturer. <sighs> I need a break. And that's all that's left? That's all that's left. Woohoohoo! Pretty good. <laughs> so we've now destroyed another gearbox. Yay, and we don't have to put it back together. And we don't have to put That's what I love about these videos, is not having to put stuff back together when you're just doing all sorts yeah. of things. Pretty cool. Okay, so Sam, quick component ID. What did we call this shaft? It was the lower one in the gearbox. You've got oil on your face as well, you know. I don't even care at this point. <laughs> um... Lay. Yeah, lay? bang on, lay shaft. I knew it this started is, with an L. And I'm sure the Yanks have a different name for it, but us English we call it. And we are obviously given the, yep, there we go, English lay shaft. All right, because it lies at the bottom of the gearbox. So. Huh. Okay, <clears throat> right. Now, oh, bits. We've got two things going on here. We've got the input shaft, which I can now separate, which is that one. And, oh, the bearing's pretty good. And that's another, oh, I remember, you got it? What do we call that? It's part of the synchromesh unit, what do we call it, remember? Really weird name. 
Bork ring. B A U L K. Bork. Bork ring. And when your synchro start to crunch in your gearbox, it's that bit that's worn out, usually. Because they are a wearing parts, but they normally last the life of the gearbox. Okay, so that's the input shaft, and that's spline. Oh, bearing. Oh, they're not supposed to just fall out like that. Where did it go? Oh, yeah. I'm dropping all sorts on the, on the floor today. Sticking back in there. Okay, all right. So, <clears throat> yeah, when your gearbox starts to wear a bit and it starts to get a bit crunchy, it's normally the bulk. Fuck, everything's so slippy today. It's normally the bulk ring. So, we'll put that down before I drop it again. And those, yeah. those splines there, spline to your friction plate and your clutch. So, when you're trying to get your gearbox back onto your engine and get, get it mated into the clutch, it's usually that that's causing all the problems. Okay, so we've got here, let me get that together again, there we go. So the main output shaft, and on the output shaft we have got first gear driven, second gear driven, third gear driven, and remember fourth gear on a, a rear wheel drive gearbox the input shaft is connected directly to the output shaft, it's called straight through drive, and that's done using that synchro hub onto there, look, and that, um, that little collar just moves forwards, the synchro collar moves forwards, and mechanically just connects the two shafts. And fifth gear was done at the back, the overdrive gear we talked about earlier on, and of course reverse is sat down there as well. And other than that, it's pretty much a standard gearbox. Yeah. yeah. Okay, and we had, uh, what else last before we sign off? We had the little lozenges. Remember what they did? No, no, they didn't come out. They didn't want to come didn't out. Didn't want to come out at all, did they? Little bastards. They're probably yeah. doing their job. Doing their job. So the interlocks are there to prevent more than one of the selector rods from moving away from neutral. Yeah? Because if it did, then you'd end up with two gears engaged at once. Yeah. And that would cause mechanical lock and the whole thing would explode. The driver would lose control of the car and crash, and then there'd be lots of ambulances and things oh, turning yeah. up. Yeah. So, but actually, that little tic tac thing is actually quite important. Yeah. It means I've you... seen them, but I never knew what it was. Uh -huh. Like and I just thought that they just sat in there, you know? Yeah. yeah. They didn't come out that it was welded in there, and I don't know why. Right. But I just am unaware of these things. Mm, well, I, I I only learned about interlocks properly, you know, when I was teaching it. Now, I've heard of the words all 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 years. Mm. Okay, and the ball bearings, in conjunction with the springs, remember there were no springs being used with the interlocks, but we used springs with the ball bearings, mm. and that's part of the detent system. So the detent system makes sure that the, the shaft, the selector shaft, moves all the way, rather than just part way, because it actually has a, a positive sort of feel to it, uh, and it, it locates correctly, so that the, the dog teeth and the collar actually engage fully because it was only half engaged, it could tend to slip. Yeah. And it also gives you know a feel for the driver. You know when you're in the car, it's first gear, click, and you know that it's the driver knows it's in gear because he's felt it yeah. click into place. So that's your detent mechanism. And there's there's videos on the channel covering interlock and detent mechanisms in a little bit more detail on a much shorter video. Okay. Well, that's gearbox one done. Number one. Yeah. It's gonna be a long day. Cool. Right. Let's do a sign off. You might need to clean your face. Probably. <laughs> Although it's pretty cool, actually. These gloves, this. <laughs> there you go, crew. Uh, an insight into uh, the internal workings of a rear-wheel drive Mazda gearbox. And that was a five-speed gearbox, wasn't it? Five-speed plus reverse. And we found a few quirky bits, and one bit did get the better of me. And hey, you know, this is testament as to why you should really have the workshop manual. Now, if I was pulling that gearbox apart to fix it, to rebuild it, I guarantee to you I would not have attacked it with a hammer and chisel. No, 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 I would not have done that, believe me. But, you know, when it's just to have a look inside, a bit of fun, it doesn't really matter, does it? You know, so call me a butcher in the comments if you like. I don't care. I'm a Yorkshireman and I can take it. Did you have fun, Sam? Yep. Pretty full on, wasn't it? Yeah, it yeah, smells bad now. Yeah, you saw the beads of sweat running off Andy's face. And you, you know when that happens, it's things, th it's things are going hard. You know, It's a serious, serious session. Don't forget, I'm full of cold as well at the moment, so it's not good. Okay, well, if you enjoyed the, uh, the video, why not click on the subscribe button? You can then um, tick the box.
and turn on notifications and our friends down at YouTube will send you an email as and when I upload any new videos. If you're using a smart device, just ring the bell. Dead easy. Okay, Sam, you just stand over here, I think. So, <clears throat> you'll find us on Facebook. Google Plus, Twitter, and Instagram. You will, most definitely. And there's a new one, Patreon. There's a Patreon account out there. So if you found the video helpful and it's helped you to solve problems on your vehicle and you want to, why not drop a few dollars our way and it all, all helps. Okay, crew. Well, we'll see you next time. I'm losing my voice now. You can tell, can you? <clears throat> <clears throat> Terrible. <laughs> time for a cigarette. <laughs> That's the worst thing I can do. A pint of cider would be good. Okay, guys. We'll see you next time. Cheers. Over and out. Having tour girl, Sam. How are I'm you? Back. You're back. It's Fantastic. So I know. And I've got a new shirt, so I thought it's only right that I give you a new shirt too. So there you go. So excited for my new shirt. Then I don't have to wear different shirts every day. And as a classic Tall Girl Sam move, I am going to wear it like this. Wow, would you look at that? I'd say that is a great present for your girlfriend if she's into tools. If she's not, she's probably into tools because you're a tool. See what I did there? Tool girl shirt, perfect. <laughs>